R dot P two dot uh, pi. So it's and then we do the same thing, but vice versa. I think there's way too much geometry in there. Yeah, well, that's just complicated because that's complicated. Um, you can't get the length and the width, right? And so one of the coordinates stays the same. So. Um. The distance is a function, so you can do r dot pi dot distance, even though it's not a method. We created a new method. Put it on point. We pass it another point. This actually probably shouldn't be a. Doesn't actually matter. Um. So this becomes P1 was uh, 0, 0, right? And P2 was 10, 10. So maybe that's a little cleaner than it was before. Um, so, so we can embed other structures inside of our structure. Okay. So a rectangle is two points. So a circle is similar, right? So we can have P point. And then we just do p is point zero zero. Similar idea. Okay. Does that make sense? No. Like I said, too much geometry. <laughs> um. That's all right. I mean, like the main thing is just to get the, the idea of receivers here and and uh, right and structs and. And embedded types. Embedded types, thank you. Yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. Looking ahead, awesome. Um, I thought that's what that word you just keep typing, keep typing, typing. So this is a struct which contains another struct. The circle has a point. Point has x and y. We can rename this to point. And then change down here like this. So all I did was rename P to point. So you can do that. You can give it the same name. That's fine. It turns out if you do that, if you do it this way and don't give it a type, so this is the same as point, okay? If you do that, anything that's on point, you can call on circle. So I can, inside of here, for example, say C dot distance. There is no distance method on circle. There is a distance method on point. Okay. So what this does is it takes c dot point dot distance. So it allows us to remove that point. Why would you want to do that? Uh, in this case, there's not a lot of reason to do that. But I have an example in here. Suppose we had a person that has a name, and it says talk, and it says hi, my name is, and it prints out the name. Okay. We want to create a new Android. So what's an Android? It's a person, and it has like a model. ABCD, right? the, the model of the machine. That's what you think of model. Um, an Android is a person who's also a machine. That's the idea of an Android. Um, so this would work, but we'd rather say that Android is a person instead of Android has a person, right? Because fields, when you think of fields, like a circle has a radius. Okay? So it's like a has a relationship. It's, it isn't an is a relationship. A circle is not a radius. Okay? It has a uh, but an android is a person. It doesn't have a person. So one way we can represent that relationship is using the embedded type. So this is the embedded type. It's when you give it uh, the name of a type like this and leave out the type. So now we say android, person, and now android is a person. Okay? Leaves a type. And that means we can say a.person.talk, but we can also just say a.talk. This talk method is not defined on android. It's the point of person. But because we use person as an embedded type, we can just call it directly. Okay? So the reason I bring that up is Go does not have inheritance. If you're used to a language that has inheritance, like JavaScript or Java or any of those, Go doesn't have that. Okay? You cannot create type hierarchies. I cannot say uh, the type Android colon person or implements person. <coughs> I can't do that. 
do that. So it, the struct is just a struct. It doesn't have this relationship of types in a hierarchy. So this is a way to sort of emulate that ability. We'll see that sometimes. But anyway, the, the is a relationship works like this. The has a is the fields. Everybody following that? Not all. Has a is like model. Android has a model. Android is a person. You wouldn't say Android has a person. So to make something is a something, you have to you use an embedding. Type. The same as the type. Yep. So there's no type here. Does that make uh, the Android have a type or be a type of person? No. Is a person a type for Android? No. So it's a way of like emulating that, but it doesn't actually change it. So, um, like you have instance of in some languages. Uh, so you'd say a instance of person. You can't do that. There's there's no actual relationship between the types here. It just allows you to call the method. So a dot talk. It just goes to a dot person dot talk. Okay. That's all it's doing. Yeah, that's it. Okay, interfaces. So we saw a struct. A struct is pretty straightforward, it's just fields. Adding a method, that's a little more complicated, but hopefully it's not too different from making a function. Um, it turns out if you name something with the same name, that's an interesting relationship, right? We saw that rectangles have an area and circles have an area. That's kind of interesting. Wouldn't it be cool if we added a way of pulling that out and representing it? And that's what an interface allows you to do. Okay? So you may have noticed the name of rectangle area method has the same thing as circle. That's not an accident in both real life and in programming. Relationships like these are commonplace. So Go has a way of making the accidental similarities explicit through a type known as an interface. So let's just say that uh, rectangles and circles are both shapes, right? So we can create a type shape interface. And what I'm saying here, inside of the curly braces, so it's type, and then this is the name you make up, and then the keyword interface, which is like struct, but it's different, right? It's interface, and then curly braces. Inside of here, you have function definitions. And in order for something to implement the shape interface, it has to have a method, which implements this, okay? Yeah? So could you further define the shape by adding an area method, uh, a volume method, Sure, you could do that. Um, if you do that, if you have more than one, that means that we have to create a volume for rectangle and a volume for circle. If they don't have it, then they are not shapes, okay? Um, so what this is doing is specifying a contract. It's saying that in order to be a shape, you have to have area. So since we defined area for rectangles, notice the type here, area, parentheses, float 64. That matches area, parentheses, quote 64. So this part, the part after the receiver, has to match. If they match, then rectangle implements the shape interface. Okay? Which makes sense because a rectangle is a shape. And the same is true of a circle. So here's what that allows us to do. I have R as a rectangle and C as a circle. I can create a shape. Bar S shape. Okay? So S is a shape. What's shape again? Something that has interface. Interface. an interface. Okay. So I can assign the shape to S, C. Why am I allowed to do that? If I say S equals C. So now the interface, right, is it going to find, uh, is it going to use the interface to find C? The reason I'm allowed to do this is because, remember, C is a circle. A circle is a shape. Why is a circle a shape? Because it has an area method. So since C is a shape, I'm allowed to assign it to a variable that's also a shape. Okay? So you have one variable that you know is the shape variable, and that can hold all kinds of different shapes if they implement that. Yes. Shape I can also do this. So I can store R in S. Why can I do that? Because R is a rectangle, 
and rectangles are also shapes because they also implement an area vector. So this is what allows us to store different things in the same place. Okay? Can you store R and C? No. So these two are valid. Uh, invalid. Why is that invalid? Why can't I say R equals C? Rectangle's not a circle. Rectangle's not a circle. So the they're types don't match. Their methods are different because the method for like, the function for figuring out a rectangle is, is not the same as the function for figuring out a circle. It's because the types are different. Uh, so circle has, is a struct with these properties and rectangle is a struct with these properties. So they're different types. They have different types. Um, with an interface, they both implement that interface, so you can do that, okay? So inter interfaces allow us to have much more flexibility in our code, okay? That's what allows us to store, um, remember we talked about with the, with the list, and in JavaScript you can have integers and strings and whatever inside of them, but in Go you can have integers in your list, or you can have strings in your list, but you can't have both. A shape would allow you to do, I mean, sorry, an interface would allow you to do both, okay? That's how we can get the dynamic flexibility. So if you were to put two different terms under the interface, one with an integer and one with a string, then you could combine a string and an integer into the type? Um, you'd have to create an interface which both strings and integers implement. Uh, okay. Like if you wanted to make an interface in length, would that be able to do? Uh, so, so you're thinking of I don't know, length B thing. And then add, you're thinking like that? So a length B thing has a method called length which returns an int. Now, the built-in type string and int don't, don't implement anything. They don't have any methods. Remember, when we want to get the, like, the length of a slice, we use the length function. We don't say slice.length. So they don't have any methods. So, there's no way to bridge that gap, except to do this. <coughs> That's an empty interface. So what implements this interface? Anything. Anything. Everything implements that interface. Because it has no methods. Right? So, when you see Go code that has interface, open curly brace, close curly brace, that means anything. That's the, like object in Java. That means any type at all. Okay? It's because it's an empty method set. Okay. So this is we can now make functions that take shapes instead of circles or rectangles, and then we can interact with them. So. I can call s.area because a shape has an area method. I know that because it says so. And that means I can pass in circles or rectangles into this total area function. Okay. Um, this isn't quite correct because circles and rectangles could overlap and that doesn't make sense, but you get the idea. Um, so we, we call it like this, we pass in Question about interfaces. So the problem is to add to our shape interface a new method called perimeter, which calculates the perimeter of the shape and then implement it for circle and rectangle. Okay? If you don't remember how to calculate the perimeter of shape, just Google. That's what Google's marked. 